Okay, so in the last part, I showed you the protein bars. Um, then I have a bunch of garbage bags. Oh, more some here on the side. Garbage bags are nice, and you can actually see I'm using one here to somewhat waterproof my uh, clothing. Um, you can always use these to like for emergency ponchos or to you know kind of tape over windows in case they break and whatnot. They don't weigh that much; they don't take up that much space. So I grabbed a few and I just threw them into my bag. And then uh, a quick clot here, just a bag of it to go along with my first aid kit. Um, you know, for my first aid kit, I. I basically go big or go home. Um, I don't have band-aids in here. Um, no offense to people who like to use band-aids, but in my mind, if I get injured enough where I really need my first aid kit, it's not gonna be for small cuts like band-aids. Um, it's gonna be for really, really serious injuries. So I actually have stretch bandages, which is basically just stretch stretchable gauze in here, um, medical tape, some aspirin, some neosporin, and like a um, wound bandage, and a quick clot. I also have some, you know, like small squares of gauze for smaller wounds that, you know, a band-aid wouldn't cover anyway, but um, you don't want to use that entire stretch bandage for. Then I have here, which is a bag, uh, I have some batteries, uh, extra car key, and a Nightcore EX-10 flashlight. Uh, one thing about flashlights, uh, I might as well show you the other flashlight, and I also have my uh, D-Mini here with an 18650. You know, this is my, uh, my f bit high output light for uh, when I need a lot of light, 400 lumens out the, you know, out the front, with pretty good runtime since, uh, uh, what's it called, Lumen Power does pretty well with their regulation. Um, and I also have a brick of uh, 123 Ace batteries, you know, this will last well over a month, uh, unless I, I'm using my a high output flashlights on constant high all the time. Uh, one thing about flashlights is, you know, you do want to make sure, like I said, with this, like with this one, I like I twist the tail cap so it turns off, and I flip the switch again, um, just because you know you don't want to have the light accidentally switch on in your bag and then drain your batteries. Um, for a light like the the Nightcore EX10, um, you can't really, you have to really twist it very far before it locks out, and even then the piston can still turn the light on. So with this, I just ramp it down all the way to the lowest mode, and you know it can run over a month on the lowest mode. So even if the light does get switched on, um, it'll be fine. This isn't a long-term bag. As soon as I get power back and hurricane thing is over, um, all of this stuff is going to get redistributed back into storage. Uh, I have some water. I have a. Stainless steel Nalgene filled with water as well as a cup in case I have to boil anything. I also have another plastic Nalgene canteen for water. Um, you know, I can boil in the stainless steel Nalgene. I can't boil in the plastic one, so the plastic one is just used more for water storage at a much lighter weight. And then I also have two bottles of bottled water in case I have to give it out or, you know, it never hurts to have some bottled water around. And then I have uh, a full canister of Isopro, uh, eight ounce canister, as well as my MSR Pocket Rocket, which has been a super great stove. You know, I bought it for backpacking and hiking. Um, it's not the smallest, it's not the most lightweight stove, but it's super reliable and, you know, when I bought it, it was like $40. Uh, so it's relatively inexpensive compared to like, you know, the $100 multi fuel stoves. Oh, got some more garbage bags in here. Uh, my extra phone, my, this is my backup phone. It's an unlocked phone, so I can use it with any um, SIM card. You can see, it's, I've always joked that it's my uh, Zoolander phone. It's super tiny, which is good because uh, the battery life on it is actually really good, uh, as well as the charging cable for it. That's fully charged with no SIM card in there right now because obviously my SIM card is in my, uh, my Galaxy S2. Then I have a Eagle Tac P100A2. Um, this is like my triple uh, my double a light that, that's meant for throw you know it has a small emitter with a very deep narrow reflector so it produces a very tight spot and even though the output may not be as high as the lumen power it actually throws comparatively well because the lumen power does throw well because of the sheer output but because of how wide and um not deep that reflector is it actually floods a lot as well so i have this in there and again twist the tail cap so it doesn't accidentally turn on in your bag uh, it's a, one of those Brickford sandwiches. Just threw it in there just in case I got tired of the protein bars. These sandwiches don't taste the greatest, but it's, uh, it's calories, you know, it's 300 calories and it's something to eat. 
I have a multi-tool, it's a Gerber 600, I think. Oh, onto knives. My gatillion is in there. My, uh, my browning is in there. You know, this is my main woods blade, for those of you who don't know. All of these are fully sharpened. I also went ahead and threw my, uh, my D2 Benchmade rant in there. I don't know, maybe I went a little excessive with the knives, but I am a knife guy, so what can I say? <laughs> I like having multiple knives for multiple purposes. I also have my sharpening stuff. You know, you, you don't know how long, how much wood you might have to go through and whatnot. Doesn't hurt to have the sharpening stuff. This is mainly going to be in the car anyway, so I'm not that overly concerned about weight. And you know, and I've packed in 60, 70 pound packs when I go backpacking before. Because I'm not really an ultra lighter, so I'm not concerned about carrying the duffel bag. I also have a big bag of a single use of wet ones. You know, antibacterial wipes, uh, you don't know what you're going to be touching and you don't want to be eating or like touching your face or anything after you've like put your hands on like dirty water, it might be sewage water and whatnot. And it's good for like cleaning up, you know, if you can't shower and whatnot, you can at least kind of stay fresh. Oh, I have some more AAA batteries. And then I have a spare belt, you know, a cheap um, 511 TDU belt, just you know, because I have pants in here, and yeah, I do have a leather belt, my new uh, Dissy leather belt on me. Uh, but what if it happens if I can't put my pants on or whatever, and I could just grab this bag uh, with a carabiner there in case I have to attach anything to it. I also have two pairs of gloves, you know, mechanics gloves, as well as these uh, very nice, um, like, polyurethane coated mesh gloves that's really good for grip. Uh, a box of contacts, single use contacts. Uh, I, I do have astigmatism, so they're Torix. Um, I decided to take these in case anything happens to both my pairs of glasses. Um, these are sealed, so they'll be sterile, and I can always sterilize my fingertips with these. And I could, you know, for me, my eyesight's pretty poor, so vision's actually very important. Pair set of glasses. Uh, I also have a container of noon. Uh, you know, electrolyte replacement. It's sealed, so it's waterproof. Um, and you, don't, you know, if you can find water and if you're sweating a lot and whatnot, you do want to replace electrolytes. How much time do I have left? I might as well cut to the next part for this. Uh, the only thing that's left is my clothing and this, my outdoors bag. So, next. Alright. Here's my outdoors bag, which I, uh, sewed up for when I go, um, on day hikes and whatnot. I bring, like, Essentials, I guess you could say, you know, it's looped with some paracord and a drawstring uh, And I just kind of throw this around my shoulder and my neck. I call it almost like a shoulder bag And in here I have some cotton balls, you know for tinder uh, I have a folding trowel for digging holes And I also have uh, one of these which was a super great buy. It's a uh, one of the emergency pocket chainsaws. Um, these cut really well. These aren't like those cheap braided cable ones which will snap. This can do very decent wood processing and it cuts through wood very quick and I actually use this all the time when I uh, go to collect firewood and I don't want to bring like a folding saw because um, you know if, I'm go if I go, to go on a day hike and I want to start a smoke like a fire or something to make some tea or coffee I don't want to have to bring a folding saw with me. It's just extra weight. You know this is supposed to be a self-sustained bag on its own. Uh, I have a compass in here, a Sunto uh, A100, I think. Uh, lighter. Jet scream whistle. Uh, oh, a second lighter. Okay, why not? Why not? Fire is very important, right? I, I got no problems with using a big lighter to start a fire if I can. And then, final, you know, fire starter is the uh, Ultimate Survival Technologies Blast Match. Haven't used this in a while, actually, but you know, it's a nice thick ferro rod in there and that you can use one-handed and I've had that ceramic scraper break off break out before and it was a pain in the ass to actually finagle back into place but um worst comes to worst I can still use this with a knife or some kind of scraper to get sparks and I've used this quite a bit so I can start a fire with a ferro rod and that's about it for this bag this bag I actually have a uh, sections sewn into it you see uh I don't, well, I don't know if you can see but it has like a section for the compass for the blast match for um, the sack 
And then there's also a section there for a small DMT sharpener that's in my, uh, my work bag now. Uh, that's it for gear, and the rest of it is just clothing. Like I said, I kept it in the plastic bag. I have socks. This is just a, you know regular cotton socks, just one pair. I have three pairs of socks in here. Um, kind of got mixed up a bit. But you know, that's just cotton. Then these are two pairs of uh, athletic synthetic socks, so these will dry much quicker. I also have, basically everything in here is uh, synthetic because it dries faster, it's pretty comfortable, um, and it's light, very lightweight and gets stuffed in this small area. He, these are two um, synthetic shirts, uh, synthetic boxers, two pairs. A microfiber towel, um, you know, it's a s relatively small towel. I guess you could say it's maybe 12 by 20 inches, but um, I've used this when I go camping and backpacking and, you know, I'm like 5'9", and I could drive myself off with this without having to wring it out. And it's much smaller than a full-size bath towel, that's for sure. And then I also have uh, two pairs of synthetic pants. Uh, these are cargo pants. So plenty of pockets, it's usually what I wear on an everyday basis, although I am wearing jeans now. And then in here I also have a, a wind shell, it's a REI wind steel, um, relatively water resistant because there's DWR in it, uh, relatively wind resistant, it blocks wind up to like 40-50 miles per hour, um, anything above that and I want to have like a soft shell on or something. Um, but the nice thing about this jacket is it's very, you know, it, Bunches up to a very small package. There's a hood on it. It's very lightweight, and it breathes really well. If you know, it's the lighting's probably not good enough, but you can actually see like the fabric itself it's kind of looks like a mesh fabric. It's because um, it lets moisture out very well, so you don't get wet as easily as you as if you were to use something that was like like an actual nylon windbreaker, which doesn't breathe at all. And that's about it for the bag. Um, in terms of like, I don't have a lot of outerwear here in terms of like jackets and stuff because I would basically want to wear what I have draped over my uh, my computer desk chair. Um, it's basically a fleece jack, a fleece vest, a fleece jacket like I'm wearing right now. And then I have a soft shell that would go on top of all of that. So with all of that layering, um, I could effectively, effectively be outside during the winter and still be very warm. I also have my hat on right now. That I pull out of out of the bag, and I also have um ah oh, let me just pull it off. I have a merino wool wool buff, which you know is super warm, and I also had this in the bag, but um, because there's no heat, obviously it's been kind of cold at night, so I took it out and I've been wearing this around my neck just to keep my neck warm. <clears throat> you don't want to really get sick during you know a power outage and whatnot, because it's gonna be a pain in the ass to keep warm when you're sick and all that stuff and you know for me I have to take care of myself here since I don't really have anyone to take care of me you know my parents are all the way back in Brooklyn and whatnot um, what else is there I guess in terms of on my person right now um, I have a Prion P2 you see a bunch of uh, AAA batteries in there is meant to be used with this again like I said I'll have a review on this light actually um, there are some issues I have with it but um, I keep it the head loose so that it won't come on accidentally in my pocket and that's about it for what I have in my person. I've uh, been at home, so I don't have to EDC much. And like I said, I have a, my uh, Yukon, my Dozier Yukon Pro Skinner. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed uh, my video on my uh, go bag and my EDC for Hurricane. And the battery's about to run out, so perfect timing. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.